President Joe Biden talks to GOP senators for COVID relief and fake vaccines have been busted in China. Biden wants to delay border wall funding and GameStop has the best stocks week yet. Huge snowstorms crush the East Coast and more news about the Capitol riots. Stay tuned here for tonight's newscast. Welcome back to the WCTV newscast, the first of the semester. I'm Rebecca Vaughn. And I'm Riley Holsinger. Waynesburg University announced the opening of Chick-fil-A almost a year ago, but it's still not finished. Here's WCTV's Lindsay Stanger with an update on the project. Weighted Chick-fil-A is looking like, well, even more waiting. Um, well, I've been hearing that it's probably not gonna come. I saved up pretty much most, if not all, of my flex dollars. I'm kind of frustrated because at the beginning of the semester we had an email saying like they were going to get it in the works to get it done quickly and now it's kind of keeps getting pushed back faster and faster every day. With yet another pushback open date, the common theme among the student body is Disappointed. I'm disappointing. I'm kind of disappointed. But the complaints of the students have not gone unnoticed. As fast as we can, we're trying to make sure that the on-site guys are working as fast as we can. And our construction management team has been working with our vendors to try to speed up the process in any and all ways. The university has made several attempts to even the score. Uh, right now they're looking into uh, other stuff right now that can uh, help keep the students happy, uh, help keep them patient. Uh, as uh, I know everybody, and including the administration, really wants it uh, to get done. They are instead like giving us things like the food trucks, which are, which are great, but I would prefer the Chick-fil-A. The date for its opening has been continued to be pushed back several times now, with the original date being set way back in September. With shutdowns, miscommunications, and electrical issues, it has made it very difficult for the university to say when it will be open to the public. Despite several setbacks, the university is confident that it's well worth the wait. Reporting in Waynesburg, Lindsay Stinger, WCTV News. The pandemic might have delayed the construction of Chick-fil-A, but it didn't slow down the Eva K. Bowlby Library from assisting the community with the services they need. WCTV's Rachel Pellegrino has more on the story. In the past few months, Eva K. Bowlby Library has been experiencing an increase in their services. And we're not just talking about checking out books. Bowlby Library is not only offering newly added virtual programs, but is assisting students with their virtual schooling. Megan Ely, the Youth Services Director, said these services are now more necessary than ever. Because we are the constant. In this world of ever-changing, we are proud to say we're going to be here to serve you. That is our end goal, our passion, anything we can do to help these families. Multiple school districts across the county are still opting to do virtual learning, making EVK Bowlby Library busier than ever. We have a completely full schedule Monday through Thursday. We are here to help and we love to help. Rachel Pellegrino, WCTV News, checking out. These past few weeks, the pandemic is taking a significant toll on the GameStop stock. Lachlan Loudon takes an in-depth look at the stock market. Here's the story. Video games. From child to adult, gaming is an exhilarating pastime. GameStop, a common video game store and perhaps this generation's blockbuster, has provided these games to the current generation. However, with the pandemic looming and the new convenience of online ordering, the GameStop stock has declined significantly throughout last year. Due to its decline, hedge funds bet last week on GameStop's decline to continue. The popular social media app Reddit allows many people with one common interest to discuss on different forums on the app. The stock market in particular has a pretty large following. Redditors who were upset with people betting on GameStop to fail decided to get together and all purchase GameStop's stock. Which means that the stock value started from here and by the end of the week went up to here. I would say this is unprecedented just because uh, th never has Reddit ever played a, a role in finance until uh, really lately with, with Wall Street bets and, and, and the like. Um, I would say there was never really anything like it. Uh, if anything, there would be a rush to get out of the market. Um, I've never seen a rush to get to a failing company like GameStop or AMC. 
So really what's like exactly happened with me, I'm not as like advanced of a trader as like some other people. I'm just starting out. So I just went with like buying like little amounts of the stock that people were saying on Reddit yesterday to buy. And I only invested around, it was like $45. And then I doubled that up to like almost near a hundred as of early today. So just like trying to expand like the tiniest little amount of money they possibly can without like going overboard and putting thousands of dollars in. The controversy continues as Robinhood, an app that allows common folk to buy and sell small amounts of stock, has restricted trade from GameStop on Thursday, January 18th. Many people were disgruntled with this as it caused day traders to lose money they had invested into the gaming company. Essentially, I had options calls in my portfolio that took a, a good amount of my portfolio with Nokia stock and I was up positive on the day yesterday and today they cut off all trading and options calls for that and which caused caused the stock to plummet and now I lost hundreds of dollars on it and I'm in the red. Oh man, I think, uh, I think first off, the, uh, the principle behind Wall Street bets is pretty good to try to find a stock that's going to go up. But when you pick the wrong stock, you know, people can really get hurt, um, such as what happened here. So even though the stock went up tremendously and a lot of people probably got a lot of money out of this, um, it really hurts a lot of people who are betting against the value of the stock, which are why a lot of hedge fund managers really got hurt in this process. So the, the, you see a lot of people losing a lot of money because of this, this GameStop deal. In the beginning, I kind of thought it was cool, but until I saw that it was getting like extremely out of control and the SEC is probably gonna get involved, I'm pretty happy I didn't because I wouldn't like to see my money taken away. This marks an unprecedented week in finance history, as now a lawsuit is being pursued with Robinhood after their restrictions were made. Robinhood is especially under fire after a 2016 tweet resurfaced, reading, let the people trade. Um, I believe that's, completely and utterly ridiculous because uh, the only people that are winning in this situation are the hedge fund managers that actually shorted uh, these stocks to go down. Um, but in the end, it's the common uh, common platform user that uses Robinhood or E-Trade uh, as their main source of trading stocks. Um, so I, I hate quoting politicians, but a lot of politicians are saying the billionaires want to keep their money in their yachts and their mansions, where the common person is just trying to swing a, a, a slight return or a slight margin. From Wall Street to Waynesburg, this is Lachlan Loudon, reporting for WCTV. That's all we have for campus and region news. When we come back, we'll have news from around the nation. Congressional Democrats are ready to move forward quickly on President Joe Biden's massive $1.9 trillion COVID relief proposal, even without Republican support. But a group of Senate Republicans have a pitch for Biden, and it could put a major campaign promise to the test. Karen Kaifa has the latest developments from Washington. President Joe Biden opening the door to a group of Republicans to discuss his COVID relief proposal, but not willing to cede too much. He's happy to hear from them, uh, but he's uh, also feels uh, strongly about the need to make sure the size of the package meets this moment. 10 GOP senators putting forth a $600 billion plan that is significantly smaller than Biden's $1.9 trillion bill. Among the areas the GOP group has targeted, scaling down Biden's proposed income threshold for direct payments. You could have a family with three kids uh, making almost 300,000 bucks a year 
getting a check. And many of these people have had no impact from COVID. In fact, some are doing quite well. Others are struggling. Let's focus on those who are struggling. It's one point Biden appears open to negotiate. But in other areas, Democrats may be less willing to yield, like movement toward a $15 minimum wage, citing the urgency of the moment. If you listen to economists um, across the political spectrum, uh, they say that given the big hit to the economy we saw in the last quarter, uh, it's important to go big here. Senate Democrats could try to pass Biden's bill without any Republican support using a budget and deficit related mechanism called reconciliation that needs a simple majority rather than 60 votes. The White House says that's up to them. He's leaving it up to them and he believes that there is still room uh, for bipartisan support for this package. In Washington, I'm Karen Kefa. Police investigators are recommending the officer who shot and killed a rioter at the Capitol should not be charged. A U.S. Capitol Police officer shot Ashley Babbitt as a violent pro-Trump mob stormed the Capitol building on January 6th. Members of Congress who were certifying the election at the time were forced to shelter in place. The shooting is still under investigation by Metro Police, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and civil rights prosecutors. Justice Department officials could make a final decision about possible charges in the coming days. China is cracking down on a crime ring making fake vaccines for COVID-19. State media reported that three police departments have arrested more than 80 people involved in producing over 3,000 fake COVID-19 vaccine doses. Police found that since September of last year, those involved have been making huge profits by fulfilling saline solution into injectors, selling them at a higher price. China has been vaccinating its population with two shots from two companies, Sinovac and Sinopharm. The Justice Department is asking the Supreme Court to delay a case in centering on U.S.-Mexico border wall funding. The justices were scheduled to hear arguments in the case February 22nd, but in a filing Monday, the acting Solicitor General Elizabeth Pro Lager informed the justices that President Biden has directed a pause in construction. That's so the government can look at the legality of the funding and contracting methods used to construct the wall. Lawyers for the ACLU praised the filing, calling former President Trump's wall illegal and harmful to border communities. The first nor'easter of 2021 is underway on the East Coast, dumping snow, rain, and ice from Washington, D.C. to Maine, and threatening to dump a possible two feet of snow on New York City and surrounding areas. The combination of heavy snow, winds, and coastal flooding is bringing the Atlantic Coast's most densely populated region to a standstill. Daryl Forges has the latest on this winter wallop. The East Coast bracing for impact. This is a big one. A powerful nor'easter is sweeping up the eastern seaboard, delivering snow, rain, and ice from the mid-Atlantic to New England. The forecast is predicting a pretty big dump, somewhere between 12 and 18 inches of heavy wet snow across a lot of Massachusetts. Parts of New York and New Jersey expecting to see blizzard-like conditions beginning Monday afternoon, with heavy snow, wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour, and coastal flooding. Pure blizzard, this is the real thing. The multi-day winter storm is forecasted to dump up to two feet of snow in New York City, potentially making it one of the city's largest snowstorms on record. We've got to take this really seriously. Conditions are grounding flights, snarling traffic, and closing COVID-19 clinics across the region. The vaccinations are canceled today. They're also going to be canceled tomorrow based on what we are seeing right now. The sheer size of the storm stretching road crews thin. When it's statewide, obviously, we have to protect across the entire state. With the rate of snowfall posing an additional challenge. Snow plows cannot keep up with two inches per hour. Officials urging residents up and down the coast to stay off the roads. Lock the door, sit on the couch, and stay home until further notice. This is a huge storm. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. It's shaping up to be a busy week in Washington, with confirmation hearings and policy speeches by President Joe Biden on the calendar. Britt Conway has a look at the week ahead. As Congress bickers over a COVID-19 relief plan and the Senate prepares for former President Donald Trump's impeachment trial, President Joe Biden is making moves to deliver on his promise of national unity. 
Monday, he'll be talking foreign policy, with a senior administration official saying his speech will center on the theme of restoring America's place in the world. Tuesday, immigration will take center stage as Biden plans to deliver remarks and sign an executive order that his press secretary says is for, quote, advancing his priority to modernize our immigration system. Wednesday, a confirmation hearing for Michael Regan, Biden's nominee to head the Environmental Protection Agency. Thursday, another confirmation hearing, this time for Biden's nominee for Labor Secretary, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh. And Friday, Biden will deliver remarks about the economy on what the White House has dubbed Jobs Day. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Federal prosecutors want former Rudy Giuliani associate David Correa to serve more than two years in jail. Korea pleaded guilty to ripping off investigators for $2.3 million and lying to the Federal Election Commission. Prosecutors want him to pay that money back to his victims and serve at least 33 months in jail. Korea worked with Rudy Giuliani, Lev Parnas, and Igor Fruman to dig up dirt on Hunter Biden's business deals in the Ukraine. Parnas and Fruman were accused in the same fraud scheme that Korea pleaded guilty to, but Giuliani was not charged with wrongdoing. Korea is scheduled to be sentenced next week. Prosecutors say that he has not cooperated with them and argue he deserves prison time even though he claims it was all just a lapse in judgment. That's all from National News. Now a peek outside with Gwen Napier as she gives us a brief weather update. Then we have Darian Allensworth with our business and entertainment news. I'm Gwen Napier standing in a winter wonderland here at Waynesburg where we got four to six inches of snow. More on the weather later in the newscast. Here goes Zuzik into the end zone, almost untouched. The middle back out to Delaney, three ball. How about, yes. Cuts up inside, into the end zone. Touchdown, Trenton Carter. Last week's Wall Street Madness is already getting the Tinseltown treatment. David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. The GameStop stock saga seems like a Hollywood movie, and it may soon be just that. Deadline reports MGM has acquired a book proposal by Ben Mesrick about the amateur investors and day traders who did battle with Wall Street's titans over the video game retailer stock. Two of Mesrick's earlier books were turned into the gambling movie 21 and the Facebook film The Social Network. I'm just a salesman. Exactly. You're a civilian, so the KGB won't be watching. It would be a real service to Great Britain. What do you want me to do? Here's a look at Benedict Cumberbatch in the first trailer for the Cold War thriller The Courier, based on a true story. Cumberbatch plays a businessman pressed into the spy game and sent to Moscow during the lead-up to the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Courier arrives in theaters March 19th. The latest lost and found music from Neil Young's Archives project is Johnny's Island. Young recorded the album in Honolulu in 1982, but his label declined to release it. Young described it in a 1995 interview as a tropical thing all about sailing, ancient civilizations, islands, and water. Now it's coming soon at neilyoungarchives.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Most people are not as smart about money as they think they are. That's according to the nation's largest online financial services, Marketplace Lending Tree. It surveyed more than 1,500 consumers last month. The questions aimed, aimed to gauge consumer knowledge of common money myths and to understand where Americans are learning about personal finance. According to LendingTree, 96% of Americans hold on to at least one false belief about finances. For example, 45% believe that carrying a credit card balance helps your credit score. And more than a quarter of those, 40 and younger, don't think they need to be saving for retirement. Also, more than one-third say they know more about money than their parents do. Wall Street is gearing up for what could be another week of rocky trading. Fueled by small investors on Reddit driving up the price of GameStop stock. In today's Consumer Watch, Mandy Gaither has the three things you should know about this GameStop saga. 
The so-called Reddit rebellion. While it's too soon to know how it will change the future of investing, experts are sure Wall Street will never be the same. I want to make more money and I feel confident it's going up. Here are three things we do know about the GameStop saga. Number one, it's a David versus Goliath story. In this case, it's a band of amateur day traders versus Wall Street pros known as short sellers. Number two, here's how it blew up. The popular Reddit message board called Wall Street Bets noticed GameStop was heavily shorted by hedge funds. And then an army of Reddit investors rushed to buy shares in high numbers, driving up the price. They're placing bets on a market in a way that they're actually affecting the odds of the outcome. One year ago, a single GameStop share cost about $4. It's now about $150. Short sellers were forced to buy shares to cover their losing bids, which sent the price of shares soaring even higher. Number three, the Robinhood backlash on Thursday. Robinhood, the free trading app, suspended trading of GameStop and other red-hot stock shares, citing extreme volatility. We're in a historic situation where there's a lot of activity and a lot of buying concentrated in a relatively small number of symbols. But some accuse the app of caving to pressure from powerful institutions on Wall Street. The next day, Robinhood resumed limited buys on the stocks. Most experts say GameStop isn't able to support such sky-high prices, and at some point, the bubble will burst. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. The Reddit crowd also drove huge jumps in AMC, BlackBerry, Macy's, and other stocks that were heavily shorted. Meanwhile, the Sec Securities and Exchange Commission, the agency that regulates Wall Street, said it will closely review actions by trading platforms to restrict transactions. It's been a while since we've seen Waynesburg sports in action. Just over a year ago, the Lady Jackets played their last game to finish out their 2019-2020 season. Looking for a fresh start with some new faces, here is WCTV's Adam Morganti with more on the women's team. It's been almost a year since the Lady Jackets have played a basketball game, but finally they can take their shot at the PAC. The Waynesburg women's basketball team will play nine President's Athletic Conference games in no non-conference games. They usually play 16 PAC games. Last season, the Lady Jackets finished with a 8-19 record with a 6-10 PAC record, which was good for sixth place in the conference. Sam Jones enters his 13th season as a head coach of the Lady Jackets. He's excited to get the season started. It's fantastic. Uh, it brings some sense of normal schedule back to our lives, uh, which is great. And more importantly, it's just an opportunity to go out and do what we love to do, which is play basketball in a game situation. During practices, Jones wants his team to focus on two main things to get ready for the shortened season. Just to be grateful for the opportunity. And, you know, there are things that are going to look different. Some things are different, but we're trying to not focus on those at all and get frustrated or annoyed with those things. We're Jones also wants to work on getting back to the basics. Really, really just focused on the fundamentals of basketball, you know, throwing good passes, taking the good shot, setting good screens, um, defensively jumping to the ball, having our hands in the right place. Andrew Orlowski and Elena McDermott are the only two seniors on the team. Jones made them co-captains and will look to Orlowski and McDermott for their leadership. Since we're seniors, we do have a lot of pressure on us to kind of lead the team and lead by example. So we have a lot of pressure on us, but it's not like intense. Like I know 
what the right thing is to do. Orlowski has a personal milestone that she wants to reach in her final season. My individual goal is to reach a thousand points. So it was a lot like looking a lot easier when we had 28, 30 games. Like it was an easier goal to get to, but definitely gonna have to give my high horse with only nine games. Waynesburg's first game of the season is on Wednesday, February 3rd, when they journey to Grove City to battle the defending PAC champions, Grove City Wolverines. Tip off is at 5:30 p.m. For WCTV Sports, I'm Madam Morganti. Wishing the Lady Jays good luck as their season opening tomorrow at Grove City. Tip off is at 5:30 p.m. The Waynesburg men's basketball team is also looking for a fresh start. The Woo Ballers graduated many key components last season. Here's Jack Hillgrove with more on their upcoming season. February 22nd, 2020 was the last time the men's basketball team here at Waynesburg actually played a game in the Rudy Marisa Fieldhouse. Well, after COVID-19, virtual learning in the spring, and limited practice here in the fall, the Jackets are finally ready to hit the hardwood. Off the leg, underneath, Alonzo! Oh my! Moments like Isaiah's dunk here will be very different in 2021. The pandemic has completely postponed all sports at Waynesburg to this semester, and with that, the men's basketball team will play a nine-game schedule going up against each PAC school once. Head coach Tim Fusina notes that there is little room for error. Every game's going to be vital. You only get nine of them. Uh, you're playing in a comp. Everybody's in the conference tournament, but you want to put yourself in the best position you can when you get to that when you get to that situation at the end. Last season, the men's basketball team finished six and twenty overall and started the year out zero and twelve. But there's a lot of turnover heading into this season, including the graduation of three senior starters. Fusina says he's excited for the new faces to hit the floor. We're talented. We're very talented. Uh, we, you know, we're young and inexperienced, and we need to focus on us and, and figure out who we are and, and what we want to do as far as, uh, again, imposing our will on our opponent. But perhaps the biggest storyline heading into the season is the return of junior guard Matt Popek. Popek was one of the leading scorers in the conference his freshman and sophomore years, but an injury sidelined him for basically all of last season. Fusina mentions how excited he is to get back the guy who's averaged 16 points per game throughout his career. I'm really excited to have Matt back. Uh, I think he's he's meshed well with our new guys. He's meshed well with the returners that, that played all year last year, and, and I expect him to do a great job. So, The men will open their season this Saturday, February the 6th, with a home tilt against the Westminster Titans. Tip-off is at 2 o'clock. You can watch all men's and women's home basketball games this season live on our YouTube page, WUDP. As for the road games, they'll be broadcasted live on the Jackets Radio Network, WCYJFM. Hopefully for the men, their season goes better than that shot. For WCTV Sports, I'm Jack Hillgrove. The game versus Grove City is postponed till further notice. The men's team will host Westminster Saturday at 2 p.m. to kick off their season. The Pittsburgh Penguins started the season off to what is slower than a usual start. After a 3-1 loss last night against the New York Rangers, they sit in fourth in the East Division. Just above 500, the 5-4-1 and one Penguins look to regain themselves with the rest of the week off. They will travel to New York this Saturday facing the Rangers at 7 p.m. That's all for sports. When we come back, we'll have Gwen Napier with, to keep us in the loop with all the snow for the weather update. Have you ever been to the Everly Library? If not, you should, because it's great. They have books of all different genres. History, biography, fiction. Try The Evolution of Life, Life of Pi, or Jurassic Park. So what if books aren't your thing? Try movies like Frozen, or TV shows like Lost. Books and DVDs aren't the only thing, though. Take a trip to the second floor. Welcome to the Writing Center. These tutors will tell you everything you need to know about writing a paper, and they'll help revise your essays. Now let's head back down. Behold, the Knox Learning Center. Need to print something out five minutes before your next class because you procrastinated? No problem. You can also print off pictures of dogs. Because, well, you can. So grab your homework, 
laptop, and textbook, and study diligently. Bring your lunch, too. Actually, you can't. That's illegal. Now you know the Everly Library. Stop by any time. Seriously, it's open all week. Good evening, I'm Gwen Napier here with your full weather update. It is currently 33 degrees outside with generally cloudy skies. Tonight will be a low of 24 degrees with some snow showers on and off. Tomorrow will be a high of 32 degrees with a low of 15 degrees and once again we'll be seeing some cloudy skies. Thursday will be a high of 40 and a low of 34 with sun early in the morning then turning cloudy in the late afternoon. Friday will be the warmest day of the week with a high of 43 degrees and a low of 17 degrees. However, rain showers are expected. The temperatures start to cool down as we head into this weekend, Saturday being a high of 33 with a low of 18 and cloudy skies. Sunday will be a high of 30 degrees and a low of 3 degrees. We will be seeing snow showers on and off throughout the day. Monday will be a high of 16 degrees and a low of 5 degrees. It's going to be bitterly cold, so make sure to stay inside and if you have to go out, bundle up. I'm Gwen Napier and that was your full weather update. Thank you Gwen for the weather update. Rebecca, today was Groundhog Day, Punxsutawney Phil sadly saw his shadow, meaning six more weeks of winter. How do you feel about that? Well, I'll admit, as sad as it is that we're going to have more winter, this is going to be the first time in a, a couple years that we've seen winter into like February. Like We had that big snow yesterday and the day before. It, this is the first time we've really seen winter into these months. Yeah, I agree. Uh, that's all we have for the newscast today. That's Rebecca Vaughn. I'm Riley Holsinger. Stay tuned to WUDP on YouTube to watch the newscast every week. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.